Hey guys, Roland here with Garage Golf here in the Garage Golf Studio. Doing another video for you guys today, something a little bit different. Um, this is something that I've been curious about for quite a bit and something that I've never actually seen anyone else test. So I'm sure there may be some out there, but uh, this is something that I was interested in doing on my own. Uh, what we're looking to do today is uh, we're talking all about adjustable clubs, something like an adjustable hybrid, similar to this Tylus 816 H1. If you're not familiar with Tylus, they have an adapter on there that goes anywhere between A1 to D4. So that's 16 different settings that you can place this club at. So here, we're talking about a 19 degree adjustable hybrid. Um, and it should be able to go anywhere up and down about 2 degrees aloft and also change the lie with that Tylus adapter setting. So what I'd like to do today is I'm actually going to hit three shots on each individual setting with this particular club. And I want to see what that does to affect the ball flight and the data and what we get as far as the information. Uh, we'll be using SkyTrack today to do this. Uh, the ball we'll be using is a Bridgestone golf ball. This is a Tour B330S golf ball. Just so you have an idea on what kind of uh, equipment we're going to be using. Now I'll be real honest with you, this is a Diamana uh, whiteboard shaft, 90 gram stiff. It's not meant for me, to be honest with you, um, but it's something that I got my hands on a while back and wanted to try it. Um, with the information today on the video, I'm not worried about distances at all. Um, I'm just going to kind of hit solid shots for you. You know, again, I'm not a pro golfer, so if I shake one or if I duff one, I'm not going to include that as far as the ball data. But if I get a clean strike on it, I'm going to send it your way so you can see what exactly happens when I change it from A1 all the way up to D4 and if it's doing what it says it should do, how much exactly is this club adjusting that ball flight based upon a solid strike? Um, they tout these all the time as being highly adjustable, but in all honesty, what kind of research do we have that backs it up? What, uh, you know, for the average golfer like ourselves, you know, what exactly is it doing for us? You know, is it going to turn my shank into, uh, you know, a less ugly shank, or is it going to give me a draw setting? What is it going to do, you know, to be honest with you? So, I think you know the answer to that, you know, no club will fix your shanks or any kind of duff or anything like that that you do. But if we're getting clean strikes on it, how exactly is it going to affect that ball data? And that's what we're going to do today. So that is 64 clean shots I have to hit for you guys. Um, obviously, I'm not going to put you through the torture and the torment of watching me do that. I'm going to fast forward those swings for you, give you at least an idea on what we're doing. Uh, we'll start with a standard D1 setting, which is their standard setting. Uh, so for this one, it's going to be a 19 degrees of loft standard setting uh, for Tylus. And we'll go all the way through the dial, um, basically give you information on each individual setting. And what I'll do is at the end, I'll give you guys the information along with what setting it's on. Now, the Skytrack's a little bit different. I can't label it A1, A2, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to label it hybrid 1, 2, 3, and 4. And next to it on the video, I'll place a picture of what exactly that setting is so you'll know exactly what setting we use for those shots. Um, in the end, we'll total up all the data, give you guys some more information, and we'll see uh, what exactly it's done for us and if it's worth you know, buying one of these highly adjustable clubs or sticking with something you may have in your bag that's not as adjustable, but that works for you as well. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do enjoy it, give us a big thumbs up. We really appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to put that in the comment section below, and uh, we'll be glad to answer any questions you guys have. Look forward to uh, giving you guys this video and the information. Thanks for watching.
Okay, guys, so let's take a look at the data that we got today. Um, I went ahead and put this in an Excel spreadsheet so you can see exactly what the numbers did per setting on the Titleist adapter. Um, I went ahead and included all settings on there uh, and highlighted the D1 setting in red because that is the standard setting for the Titleist adapter. Uh, the D1 setting did not end up being the best setting for my particular uh, swing. Uh, it turned out that the A2 and A3 setting tied for the maximum carry and total distance for my particular swing. Uh, you'll take a look at the data. It does include the ball and the club data. Uh, keep in mind that the club data with the SkyTrack is only an estimate. Um, but on average, I would say with a hybrid, I would probably swing it somewhere between uh, 75 to 85 miles per hour. Uh, so for my particular swing, the A3 setting probably be, if I was fitting myself for this particular club, would probably be the setting that I would keep it at. Um, it gave me the maximum carry. And again, remember, this particular club is not meant for me. It's definitely uh, too heavy of a club uh, for my particular swing speed. But for this, uh, for this, I, you know, this shaft and club, I uh, averaged the maximum carry and total distance on the A3 setting. It was also only negative six offline as opposed to negative 11 with the A2 setting. So that's probably what I would go with here. Um, in regards to the rest of the data, um, I went ahead and included everything for you. It is an average of the three shots. I didn't want to overload you with information, but that would give you an idea on what exactly it's doing on a per setting basis on that adapter. And some pretty interesting information there. So, um, for example, I did notice that the C1 setting, which is the most fade by setting and the lowest lofted setting, also uh, had the highest amount of flight time for me at five seconds. It was tied with the B3 and the B4 setting. Um, another interesting thing about that C1 setting is that it had the highest launch angle out of any of the settings that I hit in regards to that Titleist uh, H16H1. So it got the ball up in the air, even though it was the lowest lofted setting, and it had the highest launch angle, even though it was the lowest lofted setting. So part of that could be uh, the fade bias on that particular setting. But it was kind of interesting to see, uh, you know, what exactly the ball data was doing for each particular setting on that adapter. So, um, again, it's going to be up to you, your unique uh, swing as far as what you would need to set it on. It's definitely something that you'd want to get fitted or if you have a launch monitor that you'd want to do some testing on. But it's definitely some interesting information. Now, what I'm going to do here on the next screen, I'm going to show you some more information in regards to what we're comparing. What I went ahead and did is I put the A3 setting, the C1 setting, and the D1 setting side by side because the A3 setting has the most draw and is the highest lofted setting. The C1 setting has the least uh, amount of loft and has the most fade bias setting. And, of course, the D1 is the standard setting. So that A3 setting uh, was what worked best for me with this particular club. Uh, again, averaging 155 with the carry, 176 total yards, the standard setting for me, I was averaging 143 with 160. And on the C1 setting, which is that most fade by setting, I was averaging 147 and 165. So um, just to give you an idea on if this these adapters truly work, I want to show you the offline yardage. Take a look at the A3 setting. That is the most draw bias setting there. Um, again, negative six yards offline, which means that my shot was six yards left on average of the target line. On the D1 setting, I was actually four yards right of the target line. And on the C1 setting, which has the most fade, you would expect for it to be the furthest right, uh, did in fact do that at 17 yards offline to the right. So it just does give you an idea that that is a pretty good uh, dispersion in regards to yardage offline for the uh, three settings, the, the furthest settings off the dial and, of course, the standard setting, just to show you that uh, these things do work. You know, it's, it's definitely going to be unique to your swing speed, uh, to your swing type and what you tend to do. But uh, it, it is giving us a pretty good range of data uh, in regards to what exactly it does to adjust that ball flight and what you're seeing in regards to uh, the results of your swing. So definitely something, again, uh, see a PGA Tour professional or at least get fitted uh, professionally at a store, you know, similar to a Golf Galaxy or a PGA Tour Superstore. But um, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely doing its job. Uh, it's definitely something that um, is going to help you, I would feel. It's just a matter of you getting it fine-tuned for your unique swing. Um, so hopefully this does help you guys. I, I, it's definitely some interesting data at the very least. 
I was real uh, interested to see this. Uh, again, you know, when I was swinging, I wasn't really paying attention to what setting I had it on or seeing the, you know, the chart, like the tie list adapter chart that I have there on the right for you. I wasn't really uh, focusing on that. I was just setting it and going ahead and swinging. And again, my biggest focus was just getting some clean shots uh, to get you guys some accurate ball dead. I'm not really worried about the distance. But what I was really wanting to see is how far offline are the shots going as a result of changing the settings. And it's, it's definitely uh, some accurate information, I think, in regards to what exactly we were seeing here. So hopefully this information helps you guys. Uh, if you have any questions on uh, our experiences with this, you know, please uh, send us a comment in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer anything uh, that I can, the best, best as I can for you guys. And, of course, if you guys are interested in seeing anything similar to this on another video down the line, we're just getting started here. I'd love your input on uh, what you'd like to see and uh, see what we can do to get that done for you guys, okay? So thanks again for watching. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys in the future. Thanks again.